Cool. And let me double check that the audio is working on our YouTube. So you might get a little bit of uh, duplication here, but if it works, it should be pretty quick. Are we live? We should be live. Okay. What have we got going on here? Does Neurotech X show live? Yes. And we have audio too. Yes. All right, look at that. Oh, man. All right, people can hear what we're talking about, which is unfortunate, but there we are. Okay, so welcome to our summer mid-July hack night here on July 15th. Thank you all for joining us again. And this week, we find ourselves in the midst of some momentous news as Facebook has succeeded in one of their objectives that they set a few years ago. Um, and they were successfully able to help a paralyzed person um, speak with just using the power of their brain and express themselves in the form of sentences. So this is kind of a fairly big piece of news. Um, I don't think it's very often that neuroscience stuff really gets into general public um, just because yeah, whatever it's kind of exotic um, but the Neuralink stuff definitely makes it into the the public awareness um, they seem to do an excellent job that monkey demo um, has more views there's something about like Elon Musk's organizations that they seem to have a very good sense of how to present what they're doing in a way that's approachable and interesting, but also legitimate. So that's that's really cool that they do that. Um, but yeah, and this week with, um, you know, there, there's no monkey video, but there is a cool set of discoveries. There's a paper. Yes. There's a Can video. Can link those? Yes. Uh, we will be looking at these in a second, but let's start um, by throwing these into chat. So first off, we have video from the CSF. And we have a um, FB announcement. All right. Then we have the actual paper. And here is the Chang Lab at UCSF where this was wow. done. Uh, this was the original. FB claim goal that was from years ago and then um, here is uh, well what's next cool. all right so let's go through these links and I think we can start uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share and then let's uh, let's take a peek at these okay so everyone can see my screen yeah look yep. good yeah beautiful cool <laughs> so first off here is the video that was posted by ucsf by the way any before we dive into things any questions or comments related to this topic before we before we really start yeah out? i guess they're using um f near infrared light so f nears are they using f nears I think the details of the method is covered in the paper, a subdural high density multi-electrode array over the motor cortex with 48 sessions and 22 hours of training to have a vocabulary of 50 words. So it's EEG? Yes. In the base? It's, yes, it's um, transcranial EEG. Uh, yeah, I didn't know Facebook was funding that. Like, I've, I've read about it because it was pretty big into what I was thinking about, like, looking into. And, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I didn't realize, of course, Facebook's behind it. Yes, this was uh, back, let's see, 2017. Um, Facebook made a big splash and was talking about how excited they were about AI. And uh, in this F8 conference that they were having, where they did this 10-year roadmap, and you can see all this other stuff. The One of the things that they really harped on was BCI and 
silent speech communication. So right here, this is building eight. This is their secret projects group. And so here is how they describe their goal. So again, keep in mind, this was four years, two months ago. So that's, that's what changes in that amount of time. But um, silent speech communications right here. Uh, we're working on a system that will let people type with their brains. Specifically, we have a goal of creating a silent speech, 100 words per minute, straight from your brain, five times faster than on your smartphone. And I think that there's a lot of reasons that that makes sense. Um, how can you make a Facebook post about how awesome you are if you're in VR? It can't happen, right? There's, there's too much typing to do. But if you could think it and simply post it, you could you can just imagine the Facebook feed updates from people's subconscious uh, mental stream, right? I, I think every post would be some variation of I'm awesome and you're not or something. Yeah, like, who knows? I, I mean, <laughs> I, I'd be worried about accidental posts like oh, someone yeah. thinking something really angry at their yeah. boss and yeah, then exactly. it just gets posted to Facebook. As yeah. if we don't post our thoughts enough already. <laughs> I know, right? And what if it was happening when you didn't want it? <laughs> wow. This person, so, they said the person, the subject had a, a, a stroke in their brain stem. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. Yeah, um, there's a lot of. I mean, obviously, if you, if you if you have a stroke in your in your frontal cortex, you're probably not going to be communicating much for the rest of your life unless you recover. But yeah, if you work with people that have serious impairments, especially serious motor impairments, there's always going to be some some story there, and it's probably probably. But that's rough. why they picked this person because, sure, their hand, their rest of their body is just it's not going to get the messages anymore. But hey, they're very much there, and they have thoughts they want to articulate. That's yeah, what. and I think it's worth talking through the the scope of it. You know, as we as we step through this, because I think you bring up an excellent point, which is really what is the applicability of this technology? And I think that you'll see that even in this announcement, they kind of address the fact that this is something that is more of a prototype than, than anything you can do feasibly. But that's an excellent point. Yeah. I, where on earth did they get the, the tech? Okay. Did, so let's, where did let's they get start the, with the, the okay. So this was the original goal um, back in 2017. So, um, and from what I understand, it was basically, we really, you know, as a supplement to VR, we see this as interesting. Now, um, here is the post uh, today, and the, they'll walk you through, you know, this whole thing, including the, the UCSF, and we'll read through the article. But let's just start with the UCSF video, because that's going to be like a two-minute Summary CSF of what they researchers think is sort of have shown that full words and sentences can like be decoded actually. from the brain activity of a yeah, person I, with paralysis who is unable to speak. Dr. Edward Chang's team worked with Great. a brain stem so, stroke yes, survivor who lost the this ability the to articulate words 15 lab. years ago. And I think this was um, the man has relied on other limited means to, to communicate communicate I, before yeah yeah so this yeah. was the previous in this study an electrode device yeah. was implanted I, over I the brain area that normally controls like the vocal a, tract is it utah or a question was displayed for the participant and the device I'm recorded brain remember. activity I, while he attempted to so speak i was just watching reply. point break recently a computer and all I can algorithm think translated <laughs> the brain activity utah patterns grid. into words and yeah. sentences oh, man, I'm in sorry. real time i'm not sure um, if we had Nick here, I'm sure he could tell yeah, us. Yeah, Nick or Morgan would be able to tell us exactly which unit that is, probably, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. that they implanted. Um, and here is, okay, so the, the system that this goes into has the signal processing, the detection, the classifier, and a language model. Um, and I think we'll see this in more detail in the um, translated the brain activity patterns into words that, and sentences that we flip through. In but real time. these are the the basic. Uh, so words and sentences. Here's the prompt. How are you today? And then here is what they decode from brain activity. And so this let's take a look at the time elapsed because I think that's worth noting. Okay. So go to so, right when the prompt.
prompt was finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So this is 58 seconds. Uh, 59 is when we see the first dot appear. Okay. So in this system that they have tuned for this person, by the way, this kind of looks like an eye tracker bar, but maybe it's, you know, something else or whatever. But um, here, 59 seconds. And let's see when it first. I thought they said 100 words per minute. So that's. No, or that was that's their, their goal, goal in 2017. Yeah. So, so this is this is exactly what we're doing now, right? We're four years later. How close 15, have they? Fifteen point two words per minute. Yep, that and they said that that was with seventy, or it's later in this video. Let's get through mm -hmm. this. Section. Yeah, so five seconds to start the first word. Uh, yeah. Nine yep. seconds to get to the second one. And we're done. All right, so that took 16 seconds for four words. Um, very cool, but it still doesn't seem like you would be able to converse at high speeds. Or it seems I mean, harder than actually typing because you have to focus longer on each word than you normally would. And that, and that doesn't sound very fun. Though, I would though, hope that this the words per minute per subject would increase as the system learns over time. So if they quadrupled the amount of time they spent from this point, if this was just one piece and they did, you know, four times that, I can imagine it getting, you know, maybe twice as fast at least. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think the, the goal is just to show that we are, you know, one to 5% of the way there towards what they were hoping to get to. Um, despite the the work that went into it and so the only conclusion i think that we really need to draw from that is that this is this is challenging um we've seen a lot of attempts at this we've seen the natural handwriting paper that was very exciting um that got you know i think 40 ish words per minute and had good accuracy um and this is something different this is facebook's attempt to you know have the real world classifier with this lab um so yeah this this part right here does take a little bit about 16 seconds for these four words it seems like orders of magnitude higher difficulty than what uh, Neuralink went after with the monkey. Well, Neuralink is... It's so much more complicated than where would you like to move your right arm. Right, exactly, exactly. Um, even though speech seems like something straightforward that we do, it's extremely complex and it involves many different parts of the brain. And that's a, that's a great point. So this computer algorithm could distinguish 50 words. And so that's something that's kind of worth... Uh, noting on which is it wasn't trained on the dictionary and <laughs> it's trying to identify which dictionary word this person is thinking of the vocabulary that the classifier has is only 50 categories um this so straight out of the scene from uh what's the uh what's the movie called transcendence with johnny depp oh and yeah as he's dying he just has to read all of the uh and obviously they have an array plugged into his whole brain and he has to read the whole dictionary. Right. And it still doesn't tell you who you are. But right. So, um, more like captures his reaction to each word and stuff like that. Yes. And a lot of these, um, experiments will do this narrowing because depending on how you set it up, you can either get acceptable accuracy or you can get terrible accuracy. So, yeah. If you were trying to match which word they're saying against any possible word, that's really tough. And so by doing it this way, it it's accurate, but it seems a lot better than it is. Because really what you're saying is, you know, you go through all this effort, you get the implant, you get a classifier, you train it, and now your vocabulary is 50 words, each of which takes a few seconds. Very, very cool to see the concept proven. It's just hard to imagine that this was scaled towards helping um, people with motor impairment be able to express themselves Generate very easily. Yeah. Over 1, I, I, mean, I do think a lot of this is just like a lot of the other forms of technology. This is going to advance at a pretty exponential rate. Oh, for sure. Like I could 
easily because they understand now how to make mm -hmm. each word classifier and theoretically they can just keep adding words mm -hmm. or speeding up the classifier itself mm -hmm. so that it can identify stuff with less information mm -hmm. um but could, this is also it a invasive grid array with that sounds like a really high pay grade to make that choice of which direction to go with that <laughs> i i or okay so what i think some after this video is over but we should try to like guess which direction we do we think would be more beneficial more if they want somebody to interact with facebook i think they're going to want to increase the speed the word go after the words for a minute I have a feeling the limitations show you that it doesn't matter which way you take it. It's very hard to scale it. So um, I would say both of them seem like uh, conditions that kind of choke off the, um, the expansion of it. So I, I think the, the letters, the cursive study seemed like it was going in a better direction because there you only have to train the classifier to recognize one of 26 letters. Um, and you just imagine yourself cursively writing the words. I have a feeling that that seems a lot better than um, training a classifier on words per se. Um, but that's just my take on it. I, it would be I, better if it was letter yeah, specific. So 26 letters and then just focus on speed is right. probably the one route. And then there's going to be a lot of words with decent speed. Like, I, right. I'm trying to remember, there was, like, a English... There's been a lot of language studies that say that a majority of the language that people use is only, like, a thousand words or so. Oh, yeah, for sure. That, that there's a sort of common vocabulary. Yeah, L like... The idea of going after the entire dictionary for right. any language is right. not really necessary, yeah. especially if Facebook as... has that data already from their Facebook posts. They have oh, every yeah. right to aggregate every single <laughs> yeah. Facebook post oh, yeah. and be like, oh. give us the top 1,000 words, feed mm -hmm. it to a chat bot. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, or even... That... For any given user, they could mine what 1,000 words they've used the most, and, and you know, that's yeah, their vocabulary. Yeah. Like, what 1,000 words have been or used? Or make it 2,000, 1,000 common, and then another 1,000 uh, user thing, and you could they could basically tweet forever. Exactly. Oh, exactly. yeah. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Yes. Twitter could do this what? as well. Like, any, if any, like, neuro, like, or really not even just neuroscience, but any researcher who wants to understand what the most common words are in any language mm -hmm. can just ask uh, any social media platform that has a large user base and instantly get right. a very concrete answer. Because I think Google shares a lot of this too. When you ask it to use the dictionary it'll show you its use over time and i think it gets that from the oh yeah yeah that. that's true so i do but i think a cool thing will be that these classifiers there's a chance that if the user has specialty knowledge and wants to use specific words that in the future they could train a classifier to identify words they know they use mm -hmm. exactly exactly make sure the minimum viable vocabulary so according to this um graphic the 15 words per minute 74 percent accuracy definitely matches what we saw in the video we saw 16 seconds for four words um four seconds a word and if you multiply 15 words times four, you'll get 60. And so that seems right on in terms of what they're claiming here. 74% is, depending on how you look at it, decent or not that great. Um, and then in the best conditions, they can get to about 93% accuracy with 20 words per minute. So meaning that 18. the, well, that the lag would get closer to three, three seconds per um, word instead of four. Uh, because you're getting closer yeah. to, to 
to that number. But yeah, it's still, that really doesn't, um, I mean, it's, if you wanted to make a replacement for that smartphone typing speed, um, this is very, very close. But again, if you combine the fact that it's transcranial with uh, 50 hours of training with it's a, um, you know, custom thing for one person and it only knows 50 words. Um, yeah. It just shows you that this is a very limited. Yeah. Uh, I, I demo. I do wonder exactly what training method they used because the thing is, is mm -hmm. more than likely in the future, there are going to be ways to do training mm -hmm. very like without you noticing. Like, I am pretty sure a lot of different groups are with like speech training for personal um audio like speech analysis theoretically you could just record everything you speak mm -hmm. and then have it analyze it multiple times um mm -hmm. and that should get you pretty accurate or just train a model right. to learn based off of a specific book right. because i remember when i first trained windows um speech um recognition tool they had me read a couple paragraphs mm -hmm. that were really weird not fun to read paragraphs oh yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, the voice type running. dictation right that, yeah. yep i would have much rather them give me a like 30 or 40 page book right. that i enjoy reading and use that as the training data because that's more data mm -hmm. and it's something that i'd enjoy reading exactly so, i like so the, if, i like hmm. that you're talking about a book it seems that the subject has the use of his eyes because we saw he could do the old method of looking he has to be able to use his eyes to control the little dot that would touch the aac screen right mm -hmm. But the condition that really sets this over the edge and makes it unique is the nr 3 which means he understands and knows how to speak but has lost the use of maybe the muscles and the vocal cords and the ability to push air through the mouth and what whatnot. Um, yeah. So w what he could do, like you were suggesting, Ryan, kind of was uh, you read a book and then they – they could use eye tracking to know where what word he looks at and say, please look at each word for about three seconds. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then it, that would be so fast on the training model. Yep. Um, yeah. I, I'm sure there's a lot of techniques they could use to optimize it. On the other hand, um, then, Facebook is dropping this research. What do yeah. you mean dropping? They're not, oh. they're not going to keep going with it. So let's, let's get, oh, let's skip through whoa. it and, and talk. Yeah. Yeah. So those are, <laughs> but those are excellent suggestions for the sub vocalization <laughs> isn't going to work either because uh, like the MIT guy did where you mm -hmm. put sensors right here, they may not have the use of these muscles at all. Yeah. For this individual. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they may not want to be invasive. Like, I mean, if they're making headsets, uh, I, like these invasive technologies only work for people who have like had seizures and they're willing to already have that uh, right. surgery into their head. And they're, that like, that's how I think this UCF gets its subjects was because yeah, they were. Right. Um, and so it makes sense that they might be dropping it because they can't get to enough words or maybe just invasive right. technology. Yeah, and the sub vocalization can be done with uh, non-invasive Exactly. If yeah. They lost yeah. the use of the exactly. muscles to, to fake saying the words. Yeah. Like you a... can use EIT, I think, for the sub vocalization. I don't there... think anyone's used that yet. Mm -hmm. Maybe the government, but yeah, sub vocalization <laughs> would probably work with EIT very well. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the interesting thing with these, um, with trying to develop solutions for people that have serious impairments is that you have an interesting um a, a paradox a little bit which is the more serious the impairment the smaller the pool of people that have it um, but the more it affects them 
And so I think yeah. it's, it's with all of this, it's trying to find the balancing act because if you find some condition that maybe 3,000 people have globally, um, it's fascinating to research in the lab, but um, the applicability of what you're doing may be very limited. And then if right. you're saying, okay, out of these 3,000 people, you know, 200 are good cran- candidates for this implant and like 50 of them could actually do a study of this and then two of them will complete it, you know, that kind of thing. Um, you're really kind of creating an artificial um, thing. And then on the other side, the the more broad you make the application, the less debilitating that it tends to be. So I think with all these things, there's this interesting trade-off of what's going to give the most impact and also potentially exposure in the sense that Facebook is doing this for um, people to, to get familiar with them. I think that that's where a lot of this stuff. And so probably this project ended up in a space where it was too specialized. It was too specific of a condition. The hardware was too specialized. And so like, an excellent demonstration so you can say look we've proved the concept but yeah i don't see them scaling this up but you know what's interesting is uh, another company from google's or alphabet's project x Mm -hmm. or company x they Mm -hmm. um they had been trying for like two to three years to they built these really advanced eegs to find um like biofactors for depression and anxiety Mm -hmm. which are like the biggest mental health uh issues afflictions anyone has and Mm -hmm. after three years i recently read that they um they they canceled it because they couldn't find any and they sourced the the hardware and and dropped it (laughs) yeah and i actually Mm -hmm. got an interview with the um the lab they donated those headsets to it was called like sapien labs which Mm -hmm. are doing pretty interesting brain technology also that's really interesting. I'd love to, to hear more about that project and what happened to the lab. Um, I don't know if, if that's something you want to chat about now or, or talk we, about later, but it'd be very it interesting. Before, and Ryan was saying he wanted to build one. Oh, but yeah. I'm just how many devices and like, um, is the lab doing anything with it or are they just mothballing? Um, so Google or Alphabet ended up donating their, they donated 20 devices to okay. uh, Sapien Labs. Okay. And then, gosh, let me let me throw you some links here. Beautiful. Um, yeah. I haven't yeah. figured out exactly what Sapien Labs is doing with those headsets, but I do know what they're doing with EEGs in general. Yes. The EEG technology. Yeah, I I I I think we were supposed to check in on Sapien Labs and what they were doing a while ago. Let's add that to our to do list of things to right. cover on the hack night. I'm yeah, here. we. I remember we. Last time we s- talked about Sapien Labs was, I think, actually last summer or last mm-hmm, fall, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because they wow. they have come up, and I remember wow. they had donated something but hadn't started wow. using anything, and okay. um to wow. either Google or something, and that it's only re like wow. yeah, there's so much I need to rewatch a lot of the last summers <laughs> at this. Odes so that I can see what we talked about that was starting that should be finishing pretty soon because there were a number of studies and some hardware that was getting in people's hands. Um, I mean, now we have a lot more hardware in people's hands, mm-hmm. um, with the good, like the um, a mode a bit, which I am excited about it. If the mode of it works well, I am going to buy one in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, it, it's a great track. My part. heartbeat. <laughs> yes, yeah. in, in one of them, and it and we'll know the exact interval. Um, so the, they have 20 devices. Um, let's see. I don't know if you had a link in chat or anything like that. Um, but I mean, basically, I'm just looking to... If there's an announcement of them bailing on the project because they couldn't find any markers, that's what I would find interesting yeah. to, to read. Yeah, there was. I can um, I can cool. on through. And then the uh, head doctor ended up starting her own lab called okay. Flourish Labs, uh, which I also came across and applied to. Oh, let, okay. me, Great. let me find you the... Yeah. Oh, that's, that's really it's awesome. Cool that it motivate exists because this is what I did in like 2017. This box mm-hmm. contains an Arduino and then a little Bluetooth chip and then the pulse sensor that cost twenty dollars. I would connect Thank to you. a battery and it didn't work so well. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. With those with those projects, you know, there's um, they the work great for hack nights, but for long term, it's a little 
Yeah. It's a little trickier. Okay, so in the Facebook post, um, they cover most of what we saw in the video. Um, here is where they kind of summarize what they've done. Um, and they were looking at head-mounted BCI as an input method for VR, AR, and to deal with the typing problem. And so this, in general, um, I'm sure at some point, We'll have an easy solution for getting what we want to express into text via, you know, internet devices, and VR, and so on. But for now, it's still clunky. If you're in front of a keyboard, it's easy to express yourself. For any other thing, it's, it's a little tricky. Um, and uh, so they had their team of researchers. They worked with Chang Lab. They did this paper in Nature two years ago. Um, which was real-time decoding of question and answer speech using human cortical activity. So here they had their accuracy rates of 61 to 76. And Facebook made some announcements about this because basically this, this had this um, structure to it that they wanted to emulate. So this was their initial one that they presented two years ago. And... Um, the this right here is the paper that they they present i guess it just got published today it's pretty wild um but we can check that as well and uh let's see final and uh where did i see okay exploring high bandwidth interaction um and they say by the way we already know that risk-based that link right there, risk-based devices for EMG. That's the way we're headed. Mm -hmm. Well, um, with, their, with their acquisition. If you look lab, at in September of 2019, for roughly three quarters of a billion dollars, um, Facebook purchased Control Labs, which was um, yeah. Alexander Barashan of Muse LSL fame, the code that we're still using for our... Um, Neurotech X projects uh, yep. was was at Control Labs when uh, when they got purchased by Facebook. So yeah, I, I forget the Control Labs one is different from the Mayo armband, right? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. It was this uh, it was this wristband, but they they scrubbed all the the stuff from the internet that that talked about the old one. So they purchased yeah. Control Labs, and basically in the two years that they've had to digest stuff. The control labs and the wrist gestures are working well for them. And this EEG BCI stuff in VR is not working well for them. So it seems like the the goal is the control side of VR. So in particular, yeah. and I think we've discussed this at length, the different the controllers, the calibration issues, the VR, the alignment, the tracking, the this and that. And so if you look at all of those struggles this wristband gives them um, a really good way to improve the accuracy and performance of all that. And it's not pie in the sky. Yeah. So basically I think the EEG typing stuff was Facebook's first exploration four years ago. And this is their pivot into something that they're actually getting traction with. Yeah. I I'm trying to remember, but the, the Mayo armband was the first, Oh, Thamic labs was mm -hmm. who did the Mayo one, which is very similar, but is less dense. And it so the control labs was like where you'd put a watch, whereas the Mayo was up here. Mm -hmm. um, it um, they looked at different um, sections of um, it. Oh, OK, so. Ooh, here's a, oh, cool. I didn't know Adafruit did a teardown of the Mayo armband. Let me share that. Um, I know we have someone at some, one of these at Noisebridge somewhere. Um, but yeah, it's, um, I do think there will definitely be a lot of interest in um, 
their old site is just gone. Oh, oh yeah, Control, control Labs. Labs? Yeah, yeah, they were... they're... Okay. So wait, the Mayo was built by Control Labs. No, no, no Thamic Labs did the then Mayo. Why is Mayo nuked? Um, the Mayo isn't as new. Like, I think you can still buy it on Amazon. No. Uh, yeah, but Mayo.com is just gone. Well, yeah. It's a startup that closed. Yeah, they, they Mayo died. Mayo is from some, some startup that's no longer around. So, yeah. So there's no web page. Because the Thamic Labs did, oh yeah, the tap strap as well which was a set of rings that could be used as a uh or wait did they or did that here's I, something else no uh i north then thalmic labs it's, yeah it's been, been a while since i looked at um so there's basically only one company doing serious arm controlled gestures and it's facebook mm -hmm. yeah yeah oh, they great. bought mm -hmm. almost everything so the only part of mayo that is still easy to find is their blog right. which does have some good information um i think we at Noise Bridge for a hackathon, someone used a Mayo for um, MIDI control. Um, but okay, yeah, these these are a few of the interesting things. I mean, Mayo was back in 2015, um, whereas I think when was Control Labs bought? So, uh, 2019. Yeah, I think Control Labs came out with their armband in like 2018 or something and it was it was much higher accuracy and density than the maya one well control labs was a real vc backed effort that had yeah. a significant amount of resources or maya was as well though i mean it much smaller scale i think but well because... four years earlier is going to be a lot tougher in terms of tech and ecosystem yeah, but still, you're talking about Bay Area VC investors and NYC investors. So, so. I read the thing at buynorth.com, and it says, they, yes, they're the people that made Mayo. They used to be called yeah. Thalmic Labs. And then they started making smart glasses, and Google bought them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's who bought Thalmic. Yeah, yep, that's... Um, yeah, I've they were that. after they were after um, eye tracking. So, yes, this is the tech. Uh, and right. The uh, Facebook also bought an eye tracking company called iTribe out of the Netherlands for yeah. one billion dollars. <laughs> so they've dumped Hello. several billion into this uh, BCI project Cringe already Cringe across uh, across yeah. uh, several projects. OK, so let's take a look at the announcement from Facebook. And so this is basically where they kind of explain it that um, they consider this a success, but I did find it interesting, this sentence at the end of the first paragraph. Um, this is a resounding success and it concludes our collaboration with their lab. Wow. Um, so again, um, if you look at the corporate phrasing in this announcement, it's about as clear as these things get in terms of signaling that like, hey, this was a neat experiment. We consider it a success, um, but we're gonna be focusing on this other stuff. And so right here, to continue fostering BCI applications, we're gonna open source our BCI, share our uh, prototypes, and in the meantime, on EMG research to dramatically accelerate risk-based neural interfaces for intuitive AR, VR input. And then, yeah, that is, they're they talking open, about control they open, labs. They open-sourced some type of experiments platform. 
I yes, just, uh, asking the question. How yeah, I also um, I linked the, crowd, the human X speech. company announced they're stopping their project. I just dropped the link. Who's, who's the X company? Every single new computer um, that's requires Alphabet's new experimental oh, oh, Google. This is where some it's just funny that they all have you those opinion. small experimental companies. They do. This is a new thing where you kind of, I think this started with the whole Uber um, when they bought that Carnegie Mellon advanced robotics thing lab. Um, but it's was it an the artificial intelligence driving uh, company. Well, Uber, Uber, the rideshare company wanted yeah, to yeah. What, what get the into one? the yeah the self-driving car um, self-driving car yeah yeah so they they bought C carnegie mellon's um entire ai like research laboratory uh -huh. like they hired all of them yeah. uh and it was a little bit of a like you know big deal but um all the same the 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 big thing that people are excited about with this is like hey Let's get these wrist gestures and let's make it so that trying to navigate in VR is less of a pain in the butt. Mm. Uh, Facebook is doing phenomenally well with the um, Quest 2, I believe it is. The Oculus Quest 2. Can yeah. So, so Quest 2, I think they've already passed two million units sold mm -hmm. on quest of quest twos yeah let's um, check. They, they haven't published their exact numbers but based on their public um, oh yeah look at this 2.3 million yeah in the well, last the quarter last of quarter? 2020 wow so we're hitting this inflection point if this is um no if this is accurate yeah, yeah. so you can see what's happening like you went from this super early experimentation prototyping a few years ago to like okay we're actually selling quests this is a tech that we could get in there in like a year um and i think that's just much more appealing than um you know, yeah. some of the more long-term experimentation so uh, okay wait so because um actually wait i'm trying to remember the recent data so since it's the Oh, um, it's pretty much the third quarter of 2021, and they did drop off a bit. Um, I think something like maybe five or six million units of Quest Twos have sold in total because the Quest Two came out at the beginning of the fourth quarter of 2021 for the most uh, i mean 2020 uh, for the most part so the that fourth quarter thing 2.3 million units but also the entire world population for vr mm -hmm. is not that big i back when i worked at a vr startup i had to do the calculation of the total number of people that if there was no competition anywhere in right. this space how many units could be sold mm -hmm. if price wasn't an object right. just based on technological understanding and it was something like a hundred million units mm -hmm. worldwide um the and interesting thing is that i think the pandemic absolutely oh. shifted the amount of time